welcome Pace out of the house. Now this is the first ride I've done on the new Husqvarna 701. I say the new, it's not the latest model new, it's my new bike. As you saw in a previous video, this is the 2022 model. The new 2023 model has got slightly different like upgraded graphics, but the bike is essentially exactly the same. So I'm quite pleased with the deal that I got on this. Saved myself about 15, 17, 1700 quid because I had a voucher of 500 quid off parts as well which I think I mentioned in the previous video and with the parts I've actually purchased the genuine Husqvarna it's called a, a plate holder but it's basically a tail tidy why they don't put it on a standard I don't know but it reuses the original light so it's not quite as extreme looking as some of the other ones aftermarket ones you get but I think it's very nice because it cuts it short I bought a smaller plate that fits nice and high I adapted it slightly um, with this plastic plate that came with it and you can see all that in another video because I'm doing videos on how I fitted them hopefully you can see those when they're uploaded now this petrol cap you can see there's like a bit of a dip it's not like a traditional one with the hole straight down it sort of bottoms out right by there so I guess you just got to trickle it in gently and hope for the best this is all new to me, so apologies anyone else has got a brand new bike that thinks I'm an idiot. I've only ever had old ones. So they're probably all like this now. Me, showing my age. Gotta remember as well, it's not like a DRZ, this will take a lot more fuel. That takes a maximum of about 11 quid on the Super Unleaded. What's that taking? 15. Well, there we go, that'll do 10 litres. But one thing I noticed, since I put these little um, stealth mirrors on the bike here, I can't see my flashing light. I have to go down there look, to look at the GoPro flashing. On my other ones, I'd look at the mirror in front of me and I knew then the GoPro was working and turned on. So I've noticed immediately that's an issue. So maybe I need to sort of put some clamp on mirror there that just faces up for me to look at. We'll see. But I'm going to take this for a quick blip now and just try and put a few miles on it because we're only on, uh, I can't see it there now because I don't know where my trip is. Let's have a look. I don't know, but I think we're on about 40 miles. As like I say, the bike was brand new. It had four miles on where they do the little test run and make sure everything's working right. And I obviously haven't been out on it since. So one thing with this as well, and I mentioned it on my test ride. The AZ by there has got the indicator right at the bottom. And I think the horn's just above it. So I keep going to flip the indicator there. It's exactly this like muscle memory so i keep going to flick there and i keep hitting the horn i haven't actually hit the horn today thankfully but give it time it'll happen so frustrating running a bike in i've never had to do it let's go this way shall we but see, i've never really had to run a bike in so for me this is all new and it's a bit of a pain because you can hear now there you want to let it go but then you've got to change gear so you don't get the revs up too much um, which is frustrating because <coughs> this bike is weird you don't realize how quick it is I won it on the DRZ just now in fact because I've got to get an MOT and I was on the reserve the other day so I've just taken it out to get some fuel fill it up so it's all ready for the MOT so I'm not mucking around next week it's all washed it's ready to go but anyway I took it out thinking you know give it a quick pace then and it was amazing how that bike feels completely different to this one once you've started riding this which I tell a lie I said this is the first time I've been out on it since I did it I took it out the other day for a quick blip after I fitted a few of my accessories to it but anyway bottom line is this has got so much grunt you very quickly get used to it <coughs> so like for example now if you're in a gear like I don't know fourth fifth gear like this you go there it's a high gear so it's not gonna absolutely ramp off but the torque on it is unbelievable and it's what happens is you get back on the DRZ and you do that in fourth, it just splutters and you have to drop it to third. So it is, you know, it's a huge difference. I know when I did the test ride, I was humming an R in which bike is best and is it worth the money? But yeah, it's worth the money. I mean, like I said, I haven't run it in yet, but it just feels so good. It feels like a race bike. I love it. Like here, I am just going with absolute ease here. Like what are we doing? Only 30 miles an hour, obviously, right? But look at that, same gear, fourth. 
it's got so much pull it's unbelievable it just feels good basically it's just a fun factor in it and the drz was fun but for so long i've just been throwing that thing around full throttle and it's a standard bike standard engine which is good because it basically means that you know i'm probably not pushing it they are bulletproof those things but if it was tuned up and i was giving it a pace then there's every chance that i probably would have damaged it by now really so at least with one like this you can ride it fast and you're not really putting it to its limits it's just taking it easy all the time and if you really want to let loose on it you can and maybe even like track days and stuff but i think i'll be too scared to do that at the moment so i'm actually just riding around in cumbran at the moment i've gone up you probably saw on the sign there in a place called thornhill and you can feel it's colder up here already you come up here you can go up to a place called Hentless on the side of the mountain and there's a place there i actually it's called tumbarnum when i was a kid I say a kid, when I was 16, I was a kid compared to what I am now. Me and my mate Rob, we used to go up over the top of that mountain. He had a Honda Vision, right? He was a motocross rider, so he's really good on his bike. He could pull wheelies the lot. But he had a Honda Vision, because that's just what he bought. He picked it up cheap. And I actually had a Derby Sender, which was, you know, more the off-road bike, really. But he was nuts. He didn't care. And we took that scooter, 50cc scooter, you know, with the back box on it as well. We took it up over the top of the mountain. I remember we did it at night, we had our lights on straight over the top Back then you wouldn't be allowed now, you get chased off the mountain probably by the police or someone But we weren't doing any harm, we just did it for the crack really Up over the top and then we dropped back down, not far from where I am now You'll probably notice in the camera quality he's getting worse as well Because it's actually starting to get dark now, I think it's about 5, 6 o'clock And it's currently February So what I've noticed with these GoPros is when I was on holiday And some of you may have seen that video, I did a video on my holiday like a review of the place I went but the quality of the video is amazing because you've got absolute pristine blue sky in Spain and that's exactly what the sensor wants in the GoPro and when you've got the right conditions it's an amazing quality and the photos are amazing but it's what I notice is when it dims the light it's not good at all I have used it on my other channel Pace Around the House and you notice when it gets in dark areas it's not as good as the, the other camera I use I think just because the lens and the sensor is not as big on them I don't know why, I guess it's to make them compact and stuff like that. So yeah, apologies if it's getting a bit dark. I'm gonna knock the camera off in a minute anyway, I think, because um, we're only going out for a blip here. I've noticed with this as well, a lot of people look at it. My other bike, no one really did. Unless it's just psychological because it's new to me. If I'm stopped at the traffic lights, a lot of people are sort of turning heads and having a look. I don't know if it's the color, maybe it's just the noise. One thing I've got to do is get used to those mirrors because instinctively you sort of look by there, ready for the mirror, have a quick look over your shoulder. Now I always do the old lifesaver anyway, over the shoulder, the one way or the other like that, but it's amazing how much you rely on them. And again, it's like your muscle memory, you just go back to it and it's not there. And you're on the round and you're like, oh, <coughs> where's the mirror gone? You suddenly get this light bulb moment, you look down there, but then when you're looking down, it does take your eye off the road a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, although they're good, I can sort of see why big mirrors come standard on bikes you know right at the top i love the way this bike just you can just sort of chuck it round like that one other thing i was going to say on this now my brother big pace you'll know from a previous video he bought one of these as well and he's actually bought some similar parts and got very similar products on it with his 500 pound voucher but one thing he did when he was fitting the skid plate on the underside of the bike is he adjusted his rear brake lever and I can see why because I have to say on this if I put my foot over it I'm pushing it on and I notice it dragging on the back brake and it's in a completely different position to my previous bike the DRZ it's slightly lower on that I haven't adjusted it unless someone did previous to me buying it but I've always found that in a nice natural position my feet sort of tilt downwards whereas this my foot sort of tilts under the brake so if I need the brake I put the foot on top which is fine but well, there's no doubt about it it's too high basically so i'm gonna have to adjust that but unfortunately big pay said you have to get the sump guard off so i fitted or not sump guard the skid plate so i fitted that skid plate and now it's probably gonna have to come back off this bike is quality mind i just gave it one then and uh, i probably shouldn't drive it like that really run it in but they do say some variable revs are good for the bike don't just keep it the same speed what a bike, what a machine. Anyway, on that note, that was just a quick blast. I went to get some fuel, fill her up, ready for tomorrow. I'm going on a ride with Big Pace on the Husqvarna. I'll be filming that as well. First ride out together on these bikes. So without further ado, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for red notifications. 
I've been Pace, Age of the House. Ta-ta, farewell.